Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today I want to talk about measuring power, creating a power budget, and sizing the right type of battery for your embedded solution. Let's get started. The first thing we need when we want to create a power budget for a device is to measure the power that it is consuming. There are a few different ways to do that. If you're familiar with this board that I've been working on over the past several videos, I've added another component to it. This is an INA219. It is a current sensing device. And what we have here is this yellow wire comes in from my bench power supply. So it comes into the VN plus, then the VN minus from this uh, component comes out and goes to this terminal here, which is just the five volt rail that comes over and powers either this meadow or if I take this off and put my Raspberry Pi onto the bottom, it powers this. So it is the power rail for the power supply on this board. And then ground comes out of this controller, back to this pin, and then back to the power supply. So really what we have is this is just a high side inline device. So VN positive comes from our power supply. And then VN minus on the uh, silk screen, it's a little confusing, this minus goes to the plus of your device. So it is the positive power for your device and then ground just runs back to the power supply. Another option instead of using something like this is you could use a bench supply that does current measurement for you. I've got one, in fact, the one that is powering this also measures current. You can see I've got it right here. It doesn't have as many significant digits as I would get from something like this. But more importantly, I don't have any way to monitor the output from it over time. So I don't have any way to record how much power this thing is drawing over a period of time, short of watching it and writing it down with a pencil. Once we have the circuit set up, we need to write some code to read the power from this, and then we'll output it to something that we can view. Let's take a look at how that works. To make things a little bit easier to follow, I've broken out all of the initialization into different uh, methods. And in fact, I put them in different files just so it's easier to see. We're going to initialize the current sensor when the application starts up. And this initialization basically creates an INA219. I've got some configuration here that allows us to override this with some other uh, sensor if we want to, but in the default case, it's going to use an INA219. The 219 driver needs to be configured for a few different things. The voltage range that you expect to be measuring, the maximum current, and then an ADC mode. This mode is basically uh, how frequently it samples and the resolution at which it samples. This is the default, so I didn't actually have to provide it, but I put it in here just for a little bit of clarity. I know that the current on this device will never exceed one amp. It should be actually significantly below that. So a one amp maximum should be good enough. Once I've created the current sensor, really all I have to do, just like every other Meadow Foundation driver, is attach the updated event and then tell it to start updating. I'm going to have it update every second and give us data. So once a second, this current sensor updated will be called with the new current. So I add that into the current buffer, which is defined up here as a circular buffer that is 60 elements long. And because I'm recording once per second, every 60 would be one minute. I take the average of that buffer and I output that. So what I'm doing is I'm giving us instantaneous current and I am giving us the average once per minute. We're also sending that power to uh, Meadow Cloud. It's not terribly important for this demonstration, but it shows that we can take device telemetry and send it. And I'm also sending that value to the display service. And I'll show you that here in a moment as well. But first, Let's take a look at the output of this item and, in fact, this one on the console. So here you can see it is getting those readings once per second. 
they vary everywhere from, you know, somewhere down around 150 to uh, up a little bit over 200. In fact, I see a 300 right there. So you can see that the variation happens quite a bit throughout the life cycle. What that means is you can't just take an instantaneous reading and then assume that that is our constant power consumption at all times. That's why I do the averaging. Basically, we're doing an integration of the power over time so we can look at the uh, the area under the curve. And there it just sent to the cloud one of the uh, measurements for our mean. So we had 186 milliamps over the previous minute. Before I move on and we look at battery selection, let's take a look at just a little bit more code because it's kind of interesting. In the application, what I've done is I hooked up this as the option pin, and instead of reading it at startup like I had done in a previous video, I have it hooked up to an interrupt so I can use this push button at runtime. And so what will happen is this will toggle the view on the application from showing the ball to actually showing power control. I'll actually do another video that talks about how you set up the, uh, the display. But for now, let's go take a look at exactly what that does. So again, this has this ball that just moves around based on the tilt of the accelerometer. But if I push this button, we get an interrupt and it changes the view to a, a power consumption view. The accelerometer and everything is still running, so it's still consuming the same amount of power, but now we're displaying some power information. This left value here is the uh, instantaneous or that once per second current. And then on the right is the last average that it sent to the cloud. And then we've got a bar graph. And this bar graph gives you a little bit better view of the variable nature of the power being consumed by this device. So once we have power consumption over time, we can then use that number to size our battery. So what does this number mean? Basically, it's drawing about 200 milliamps at any given time. So this is effectively like a straight line or a flat line at 200. So if it's drawing on average 200 milliamps in one hour, it will draw 200 milliamp hours of power, which makes it really easy to size your battery once you know that number. So if it's 200 milliamp hours, if I have a battery that is 1100 milliamp hour capacity, it'll run about five and a half hours. If I have a larger battery, this one's 8800 milliamp hours, it'll run, say, what is that, about 40 hours, something like that. That assumes that this device is going to be running at this consumption at all time. Let's say you want more than five hours of capacity and you're running, you know, you want to use a battery of this size because you've got maybe size constraints. You can look at doing low power mode, like a sleep mode on the device. The F7 does support that. You might also just completely power the device off via a relay, something along those lines. The other option is you can have something that adds power back in, something like a solar panel or a wind turbine that provides power in that will recharge the battery, will extend that run line. So it's a tuning process of looking at the size of the battery physically, the capacity of the battery, the amount of charge that your application consumes when running, potentially the amount of power that it consumes when it's in low power sleep mode and any additional inputs such as a solar panel charging it. So you have to take all of those things into account to come up with a power budget for how much you're consuming, how much you're putting back in, and how long it needs to be able to run on no power uh, added in. So hopefully you find that helpful. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.